This is Life in the Passing Lane, an audio biography by me. I'm Alex Bennett. And this chapter is simply entitled, I Got Cancer, Part 2. Now, the reason I say that with a smile is, is because the word cancer, as I've said before, is one of the most dreaded words in the English language. You say to somebody, I've got cancer, and they go, oh my God, how much longer do you have to live? And oh, what can we say? What can we do? Our hearts are with you, thoughts and prayers, all, all of that bullshit. So the first thing I've learned is don't tell anybody you got cancer. Because all of a sudden, I did it on Facebook, and all of a sudden I'm getting this, oh, my God, I hope you survive. Oh, geez, you know. And the fact is that I've got prostate cancer. Now, this is the, the cancer that when you say to somebody, I've got cancer, and they go, oh, my God, what, what kind? And then you go, prostate cancer. Their immediate reaction is, oh, I know somebody who had that. He's okay now. <laughs> Now, you see, what happens when you get prostate cancer, and I think I may have mentioned this before, in your, in your uh, uh, 40s or 50s or 60s, they're a little more worried about it because it's a little more dangerous than when you get to be 80, they've got so many different ways of taking care of the cancer that's going to keep it at bay for like 15 years, and they figure if you're 80 years old, that means you're not going to have problems till you're 95 well, are you ever going to reach that age? And so they pretty much say, we can take care of it. And that's exactly what they do. And my doctor told me I'd have to have two separate things. First, radiation, and then seed implants, okay? So the first thing we had to get out of the way before we even even went to do the radiation is he had to put me under, right? Right? And what he does is he goes in there and he puts uh, four little gold posts in my prostate. He says uh, they do that to guide the radiation or whatever. And there are four little gold posts, I guess, stapled into the, into the prostate. And then he then puts some stuff, which is a separator, a spacer, between my prostate and my rectum so it kind of pushes my rectum over is this all getting a little disgusting okay uh but uh, and this stuff goes in there and it stays there for about three months and then it dissipates and you pee it out okay so you have to do that so he has to put you under for that and it's like a, a 10 15 minute procedure and they wheel me into the operating room and uh, the guy who's doing the anesthetic uh yeah yeah the guy's doing the anesthetic the guy with the drugs He's, he's your friend, the guy with the drugs. And he then looks at your, uh, at your uh, 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 arm and says, where can I get this needle to go in and be good? And I said, well, you know, I have a problem with the, uh, with the crook of my arm because it's very hard to find a vein there. I said, I, I don't know why. I have veins there, but they're very hard to find. Usually if you go in by my hand, it's a lot easier. And he said, okay, so he puts his needle in the, in the oh, these huge veins you can see in my hand and, and puts it in there and goes, okay, we're set. He said, there's going to be a little discomfort when I'm putting in the, uh, the uh, propofol, which is, the, by the way, the drug that killed Michael Jackson. Uh, he said, I'm going to put it in there and you're going to be okay. Uh, he said, but just don't, uh, he says, uh, we'll, uh, it'll, it'll be a little warm. Okay, so he starts putting in this this anesthesia, and a little burn. My whole hand was starting to go on fire. I mean, I, this was real pain. Uh, again, I don't want to feel pain in any of this, and the reason you give me the anesthetic is so I won't feel pain. But my hand just was burning. I, oh, my hand's burning. So, oh, I should have put in the, some numbing agent. Oh, really? Good. So he puts in the numbing agent, and by the time it starts taking off, I'm hearing a guy saying, all right, you're all through. You know, the thing about these these drugs, it puts you out. It's like they edit a period of time, like in this case, 15 minutes of my life, was just edited out of my life. I cannot then recall anything. 
nothing. If the last thing you hear is, ow, my hand is hurting, and the next thing after that you hear is, okay, we're through, put them on the gurney, drive them down down to the recovery room or whatever. Anyway, I have this procedure, and it's necessary before the radiation, okay? So that's procedure number one. That's out of the way. However, they put me in the recovery room. This is really fun. They put you in the recovery room, and you lie there for almost an hour while they still have a drip going into you, and uh, they have you drinking water. And then they say, okay, well, now we're going to take you down to another area, and they unhook you from the, the drip, and you walk down, and you sit in a chair, and they say, I hand you this, uh, this a jar. Okay, I'll call it a jar. It's, it's hard to describe how it is. A big mouth opened bottle, okay? And they say, uh, you can't leave the hospital till you pee at least up to this level. Yeah? Till you get to this level. And I've got my wife with me now. Marjorie's with me, and she's, she's just following all of this. And um, I said, well, um, she, he said, you can go use the bathroom if you want to. I said, no, I can, I can do it here, but can I have some privacy? So she closes the curtain. Now, I don't know about you, and if, if you're a guy, if you've ever gone to the doctor, maybe you women have the same problem. They say, uh, pee in the cup. Uh, I've never been able to key, pee on cue. I'm sorry. I j- it's just not possible for me. I suddenly get what I refer to as shy bladder, all right? So I'm there in this recovery, and I can't, I'm thinking to myself, what if I can never pee again? Will they ever let me leave the hospital? In other words, will they hold me prisoner in this hospital? I know if I go home and I go to the toilet, I can pee, but I certainly, I don't know if I can do it. In this, and I'm, I'm, I'm dripping it, it drop by drop into this bottle, and I keep looking at the height it has to go, and... It's not a lot I've got to put in there. Finally, I get a certain amount. I'm not quite up to the line. I say, is this good enough? She says, well, let me ask your doctor. Uh, And then she calls somebody and says, okay, you're good to go. Boy, I'm so glad I got to pee, you know. But, I mean, when they tell you to, you can't. And in future procedures, I made a big mistake before I went into the uh, uh, operating room. I said, uh, you know where the bathroom is? They said, right over there. And I went over and I peed. Now, if I hadn't done that, I might have had enough liquid in me to just pee and go. But no. So anyway, I've now got four gold posts in me and some spacer gel. All right. And then I, what I like about the four gold posts is your body, what do they usually say? Your body's worth a dollar ninety-eight or something like that because of the chemicals in it and the composition, but that all the stuff you've got in you is only worth about a dollar ninety-eight. Well, now with the gold in it, it's probably up there around, I don't know, eight dollars and fifty cents. So I'm worth much more now than I was then. Well, next comes the radiation. The radiation is a thing called stereotactic, I think is the name for it. Sometimes they call it cyber knife, but that's a trademark term. Uh, And that is a a term they use uh, to uh, 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 talk about uh, about a form of stereotactic. So what I'm getting is stereotactic because Mount Sinai doesn't doesn't want to pay for the trademark thing, Okay. So, and I'm told that the stereotactic is actually better than the cyber knife, but I can't remember the reasons why, and I'm not going to go into it at this point. So I have to go in for what's called a simulation. One person even described it as a rehearsal for this thing. And uh, they uh, they take you in, and they put you in, you know, they get you in your, that horrible gown that they give you without the back, and then they give you a front that you can put on too, okay? And they lie me down on this thing. And and um, uh, it's hard to explain exactly what they did because I couldn't see much of it. But I'm they they put me down on this stuff. On a uh, I'm on the you know the, the tr- thing. I'm behind me is a CT scan, okay? In front of me, I'm on this gurney. 
And on the gurney is some kind of, I don't know, goo, gel, I have no idea what. But they lie me on top of it. And they say, we're making a mold of the bottom half of your body. I said, what for? They said, so that when you have the radiation, we'll put this form down there and you'll lie in that. And because it's so set to your body, you won't be able to move. Okay, it'll keep you still in one position. I went, oh, that's cool. So I'm lying there as this stuff is starting to harden around me. I can feel it hardening around me. And then they're moving me back and forth in and out of the, uh, out of the CT scan. And my doctor, who through most of these procedures, I don't even see, okay, my, my uh, oncologist is in the other room uh, checking where they got to do this and where they got to do that. And they want to look at, you know, and there, there are the gold posts. We see that in the CDC, CT scan. And uh, they, they do this whole big deal about, uh, about literally mapping out your body, okay? And then after they've done that, they say, okay, uh, we're going to put on the tattoos. I said, what? Now, let me explain to you, folks. I don't have a single tattoo on my body. And part of the reason is I never wanted to go through the pain of getting a picture of somebody on my ankle, okay, or a name on my ankle or on my wrist or on my back or a name of some girlfriend who I don't even see anymore and I can't even remember what she looks like, but I've got her name permanently, in, uh, um, permanently on my wrist. Okay, so I never got tattoos, even when I was in the Navy and I would go out and get drunk, which is the time most guys went out and got tattoos. I never got a tattoo. All right. So anyway, I don't have any tattoos. Plus, I'm Jewish and I know what they say. If you have a tattoo, you can't bear, get buried in a Jewish cemetery. It's an old Lenny Bruce bit, but it's true. Because you have to leave life the way you came in. So you can't you, you can't have tattoos. So I said, I, you know, what do you mean tattoos? And they said, yeah, we've got to put four little dots on your body so we can then know where to aim and how to set it all. Like, okay, fine. Now, I've, I've had a few painful things here. The, the, uh, um, the propofol, when they were putting it in me for the anesthetic, was pretty, pretty dreadful. Uh, and, and now these tattoo things, and they're just little tiny, you, I, if I showed them to you, you'd say, where is it? It look, almost looks like a f blue freckle. Um, she starts putting them in and it's hurting like hell. I don't know how people go out and get tattoos of like ships on their arm or anchors on their elbows or something. I don't know how they do that because it is so damn pain. It was painful. And they go, mm -hmm, and I go, oh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they do four of them, one on each side, and in the pubic region, one above, uh, I think one right above my, my belly button and one down further, okay? Uh, and uh, those are like, all of these are compass points or whatever for the, uh, for the uh, radiation, uh, and so now I, they, uh, they check me out more, and all of a sudden this stuff has gotten completely hard on me. And uh, they say, okay, you, you, you can go. Yeah, have a nice time. I didn't mention to you the night before this little thing. I had to do, you know, you know the preparation you have for a colonoscopy where you have to take that, uh, drink that stuff, um, the citric uh, something, magnesium citrate. And then that makes you poop like crazy. And then I had to do a fleet in, uh, 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 at night. And then one in the morning, and now I'm so I'm cleaned out for that operation. Uh, it just seems that I bought more fleet enemas in the last uh, two months than I have ever bought in my entire life. I mean, I've stocked up on the six pack because I need them. You need them before every radiation you do. You ready for that? Yes. You don't have to do the magnesium citrate though. Just that one time. So anyway, I leave. They've got a complete thing of my body. Uh, I've got uh, this uh, court case that's going on with this apartment, so I say I can't start the the uh, radiation till after that's over, and they so we set a date right after it was over, the Monday after the Friday that it, the last uh, session uh, took place, and uh, they say okay, they'll come back then, and we will do the first radiation. So I go in that day uh, for the radiation. And uh, they say, uh, we don't have you down here. 
I said, well, what do you mean you don't have me down there? I'm supposed to get radiated today. And they said, yeah, well, uh, well, wait a minute. Let me talk to so-and-so. And then so-and-so talked to so-and-so. And then so-and-so comes out to see me and says, oh, the, the, you, you were uh, canceled. I said, what? They said, yeah, you were canceled. I said, by who? I didn't cancel it. They said, your doctor's office. They should have called you. My doctor's office, you know, I, I'm getting a little worried about this because I'm getting treated for cancer, okay? And something like, we forgot to call you, does not play well with me. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear competence. Oh, um, so anyway, they take me up to my doctor's office, which is up a couple of floors. I go in. He comes in apologizing profusely. He says, nobody called you? I said, no, nobody called me to tell me they were can. They said, well, we had to cancel it because... We needed um, um, the uh, the uh, I don't know the, the stuff from your uh, uh, from your biopsy. We needed the slides from the biopsy so that our guy here can check it out, and so he can see uh, if uh, the it bears out the uh, 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 the bio, you know the slides that they have at the at the uh, at the lab. Okay, you get what I'm saying? There's a lab, and they take slides. It takes this part of your prostate, and then you look at it under a microscope, and they say, that's got cancer. This doesn't have cancer. That has cancer. And they, did, they didn't want just the report. They wanted the actual slides so their guy could say, bless you, go ahead, radiate him. So I, I said, okay, well. He said, we'll get back to you as soon as we get, they get back to us with the slides. And as soon as I get the guy to take... So finally, about a day later, I get a call and they say, okay, Thursday. I said, for sure? They said, for sure. We got the slides. We looked at them and said, yes, you definitely have you know, prostate cancer. Okay. So now, am I, is this getting a little complicated for you? It isn't that complicated. So I finally, I go down to do the... Uh, uh, the thing, the uh, uh, the radiation. And before each radiation treatment, I have to give myself an enema. Now, it's very a lot of fun in the morning when the first thing you do in the morning when you wake up is, is shove a nozzle up your butt. You know, it's really, it's. I can't tell you how wonderful it is. But anyway, so I do that. I've done all that. I've prepped myself. Um, I go down there, and now I have to do something else. I have to do drink. Three, four glasses of water. Okay, and what that is is to fill the bladder up, so it pushes something aside. I don't understand completely. Um, and um, you drink four glasses of water, which I, ju- I just gulp them down like crazy. But it, it that that's the hardest part of the whole process. Then you go put on the gown and everything like that, and they lead you into this room, and they say, "What kind of music do you like?" And I'm thinking. Well, now I'm now I really have pressure, even more than the peeing. I've got to pick some music for myself because what they're going to do is in the room where they're radiating me, they're going to play the music of my choice. So I said, Frank Sinatra. Okay, so they okay, Frank Sinatra, it is. And they take me into the room. They put me down. There's the mold. Okay, I lie in it, and uh, they just uh, zip me back a little bit. And there's this thing looking down at me with an eye on it, like HAL 2000 and Space Odyssey, right? And uh, they say, okay, well, we're going to start doing a few things here, and uh, then we will, we will proceed. And now I'm lying there. i got to tell you, if there's anything bad about being radiated, it's not being radiated. It's the sheer boredom of waiting for them to radiate you. And they're like in the other room with my doctor, who again I don't see. I have you know, through most of this, I've never seen him. I wouldn't be able to recognize him on the street to tell you the damn truth. Anyway, they're they're uh, 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 moving this thing around, and then it comes around, and it goes around another thing, and it's a whole device with the screens on it and. Uh, I suppose he has a CT scan built into it, and then you got this big monster eye thing. I don't. I'll tell you what that is in a bit, and then so. And now we're going on for about oh, I'd say twenty five minutes, and then they say we have a problem. I, what what's the problem? Um, you have to pee. What? 
Yeah, you got to pee. I said, why? They said, uh, your, t- your bladder's too full. I said, you're the ones that gave me four glasses of water to drink. And they said, could you just urinate a little bit and we'll see if that's enough? Now, you know, the only thing harder than being told to pee in a cup on cue is to pee with four glasses of water in you and then at a certain point when you haven't completely evacuated and you don't have complete relief, pulling back and not going anymore. And I go back into the room and I'm, I, my, my body is saying, pee, 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 come on, you, you started, why don't you finish what you started? And I say to my body, I can't, they won't let me. Okay, so I go back in there, I lie down, they look, they say, okay, that's perfect. All right. So they do some more of the stuff, and the stuff goes around some more for about another 10 minutes. And then they say to me, okay, we're going to start zapping you. I said, okay, good. And he said, it'll take about two minutes. And I'm thinking, I've been in here 40 minutes or so, and to only get two minutes of radiation? And all of a sudden, this thing goes around. It goes around again. And, uh, okay, we're through. That was it. I didn't hear anything. I didn't feel anything. You know, uh, are you sure this isn't like some kind of phony thing you're doing to get money from the government? (laughs) Because I I didn't feel a thing. And I go home and I'm, you know, they say you're supposed to be able to have a mild uh, mild fatigue maybe, uh, which I wasn't even feeling. I didn't feel that till maybe a day later or something like that. But anyway, I go home. And I'm doing my stuff. And then I go to try to pee, and I can hardly pee because the radiation has done whatever the radiation was going to do, and my prostate is kind of reacting to that. It's probably clenching down on my uh, urethra, and so I'm having trouble peeing. But uh, after a while, it started getting better and started getting better. And uh, for five days, I had to go in for these treatments every other day, all right, every other day. And um, at the very end, um, we were through with these treatments, uh, you know. And I got to tell you, I, I, uh, outside of a little, little mild fatigue, then outside of this problem with peeing, and maybe uh, about a week later, I think I had some problems with my bowels, but I'm not sure about that. There was really no real effect on me, um, and I, uh, it, it went, uh, it went pretty good. Uh, and I, I said to them, I said, do I get a, do I get a diploma or anything like that? They said, no. Marjorie wanted me to take the, the, the cast of my body home with me, but it was kind of heavy. And uh, quite frankly, it wasn't very pretty. It's just this black kind of thing. And, uh, but she said, we could paint it and we could put it in the, in the hallway. <laughs> I'm going, I don't, I don't think so. Um, but anyway, I was through with my uh, with my radiation. Uh, that was step one. Uh, step two, I uh, my my uh, the nurse of, from my doctor's office comes down and says, uh, uh, you know, uh, now we got to set you up to do the seeds. How about this date? It's two weeks from now. And I said, sure, fine. You know, you got to do the seeds. You got to do the seeds. And this procedure is probably, I haven't done it yet as as of the time that I'm recording this, um, hasn't really, uh, it really seems a little more complicated, although, uh, and some of the, the side effects seem to be a little bit worse than the radiation. Um, but, uh, so I'm not looking forward to it. But nevertheless, it's the second part of my treatment. And we will get into that and much more as I continue. This has been Life in the Passing Lane, an audio biography by me. I'm Alex Bennett.